What's up guys, bang bang, it is lunch money time. While Wall Street is trying to get rich, the rest of us just trying to get our lunch money right. I'm here with Polina. As you can tell, we're in New York. You know why? Because it's cold out here. We wore two jackets Brrr, outside today. It is cold out here. That's why I got a sweatshirt on. That's why she's got this nice little jacket on. But don't forget that while it is cold out here, you know it's hot? BlockFi accounts, because they pay an interest. Go to BlockFi.com slash pomp and sign up today. BlockFi.com slash pomp. You can earn up to 8.6% APY in that interest bearing account. Or you can sign up for the wait list for the credit card. It's coming. Regular credit card. You swipe, you get back Bitcoin instead of cash. No brainer. I'm an investor. I'm a happy user. And you will be too if you sign up at BlockFi.com slash pomp. Let's get into the news. Maybe we got some controversial things to talk about. Maybe not. I don't know, but surprise me. The U.S. jobs market recovery accelerated its pace last week as fewer Americans headed to the unemployment line. First time claims for unemployment insurance totaled 547,000, well below the Dow Jones estimate for 603,000 and a new low for the COVID-19 pandemic era. They're saying that they're saying that it's becoming closer to where it was pre-pandemic, though there's plenty of distance to cover. Wrong. Still like a hundred percent increase. It used to be down in like the hundred to two hundred thousand people, uh, but now half a million. Just so we're clear, half a it's million half people a- last week filed for unemployment. For the first half time, a million people filed for unemployment last week. Yes, you know why? Because it's only first time. You know why it's first time? because like 50 million people or whatever the number is, have filed for unemployment over the last year. We literally have run out of people to file for unemployment. It says still about 8 million fewer Americans are at work than before COVID. 8 million Americans are not working that were working last February. That's wild. 8 million. Eight million okay. <laughs> people open up the economies. Let's go. The vaccine's here. Let's roll. Credit Suisse asked investors for up to $2 billion in fresh capital after losses from Archegos Capital Management swelled more than previously disclosed. I think they lost like $5 billion. Yeah. It, um, adding to a $4.7 billion charge in the first quarter. It's wild. Bill Wong taking down Credit Suisse. Yeah, so Credit Suisse lost $5.5 billion so far from the hedge fund's failure. So it's raising money. I mean, it's raising $2.2 billion. One customer cost them $5.5 billion last year. And they're worried that people aren't diversified enough who invest in Bitcoin. You know what would have happened if they had put some of their money in Bitcoin, they would have made up for that $5.5 billion loss. What is this accent? Is this a Southern accent? Nope. <laughs> okay. I'm just tired. I'm tired of the garbage in this world. I'm tired of all the nonsense. What is this accent? I'm tired. <laughs> it's not even Southern. It's kind of like Jamaican a little bit. I don't know. Listen, what I do know is the following. <laughs> Credit Suisse had $5.5 billion wiped because of one over leveraged hedge fund. Oh wait, wrong, it's not a hedge fund, it was a family office. So it's gonna be very interesting. If all of a sudden you have family offices that are acting like hedge funds in terms of the amount of capital and the types of investments that they're putting on, should they be regulated like hedge funds or should they not? Big question. I personally think that they should not be. Why? Because it's not a hedge fund, it's personal capital, but What I do think is that banks maybe should do better diligence and make sure that they're not getting in situations where the family office is over leveraged and a slight downturn in the stock price of some assets could cause massive losses across Wall Street. Bless yo heart. Yeah. All right. Should I do my uh, Reverend Al Sharpton? No. All right. DJ Steve Aoki says that what's in, okay, sorry. DJ Steve Aoki is very, bullish on NFTs. He believes that digital works of art 
that are collectibles are the future. He said on CNBC, you have to believe that the next world is going to be digital. Everyone's going to own a digital wallet and everyone's going to flex and show what they think is valuable to them in their wallet. They didn't have any purple Gatorade left, so I had to get blue just for everyone so keeping track at home. So basically, NFTs. Or- Aoki has been way ahead of a lot of things. I tend to know why. One of our mutual friends, Dan Fleischman, is very, very close with him, and he keeps him on the latest technology trends like sporting cards, which aren't really technology, but more investment trend, and NFTs. And therefore, that is why Steve Aoki is going all in. He also is very good friends with Blau. Any of you who know who Blau is, not only is he a DJ, but he's also done very well selling NFTs. And so So I think this is a natural extension of Steve Aoki's uh, entire brand. Can music files be NFTs? They can. You can actually digitize them, NFT them, and get rocking. So I can own an original song. Yes, and you could actually own the only version of that song. Hmm, That's cool. Next. Apple reportedly wants to add more social features to iMessage, setting up yet another fight with Facebook. Apple is working on enhancements. What are the enhancements? Uh, Well, why don't they get to say their enhancements? Maybe they're going to mess up iMessage. I'll be the judge of if they're enhancements or detriments. So I think there's going to be like private things. Yeah, well, what, what is private this encrypted service that they didn't. No, that's they not didn't it. explain. Well, no. Uh, yeah. Anything, anything. <laughs> Bueller, Bueller, Bueller. <laughs> I, Features oh, after oh, those oh, privacy oh. changes take effect likely privacy. to spur more cries of foul play from Zuckerberg and company. And Apple will eventually pitch the new social features in iMessage as a private way to share updates, privacy. photos, and videos with close friends and families. And beyond that, the companies are working on all this stuff. Privacy. So essentially, <laughs> Apple is going Encryption. to- Encryption. No, 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 no. Apple is going to create the ability that makes it easier to share photos and videos and have social conversations with your friends and family and do it in a private setting rather than go one too many in a social I network like feed type I experience. Would. All right. Well, if you would like it, then maybe you could stop messaging me garbage. Huh? <laughs> Jeff Bezos. Are you okay? <laughs> Jeff Bezos, Drake, and others invest 80 million in sports media company over time, this has been very well covered in Joe's newsletter, Huddle Up. Uh, what do you think? This is a no-brainer. Duh. Why? Huh? Why? And even the number of NBA so players. what does Overtime actually do? Well, read it. They're a media company. It distributes original sports content. They also have a basketball league that they've started that is going to serve as an alternative for going to college. What? Yes. Wait, what do you mean alternative to going to So play? right now the rules are that if you want to play in the NBA, you got to go play one year. Uh, you got to be one year removed from high school. So most people, oh. what they do is the rule was designed for them to go to college for one year. But now all these kids are like, meh. It only says I have to be out of school for one year. It doesn't mean that I have to go play in college. So now these leagues are popping up that are saying, look, we'll pay you some money and then come work, come play here. And then oh, that'll give you exposure. And don't go to college. But basically this is like a, like almost like the minor leagues for the NBA. I think it's very smart. If you know that you're gonna go play in the NBA, why you gotta get a college degree? Shit, if you're not even gonna play in the NBA, why you gotta get a college degree? Overtime says it has raised more than 140 million. And in March, the company made headlines when it announced Overtime Elite, a basketball league for 16 to 18 year, year olds that allows them to earn at least 100K a year. Hold on a second, 16 year olds are still in high school. Yeah, well, you could drop out too. Oh. I don't know about this. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, well, I don't know about it. It is Ask Lunch Money time. I have an update. I have an update. I think I told everyone yesterday that I made contact with Moist. I not only have made contact with Moist, I have communicated both audio, visual, <laughs> and uh, video. <laughs> we have made contact. We have done a uh, experience. We were able right, to look each it, other square it, in the it. eye, digitally. I told him I am the captain now, Moist. We talked, he told me his life story, told me his life goals, told me what he's gonna be doing this summer. We are on the same page. 
We are going to continue to communicate, make contact with each other. Moist, soggy, wet. Sorry for soggy and wet. Moist got the call. When I call, you answer. He answered. <laughs> Hopefully, we're going to figure out some stuff to do together. I asked him, why did you use the name Moist on YouTube? He said, Moist has been my name on YouTube since I was 13. So and I think it's funny. So and I said, gonna, I think it's funny too. So we're going to get some closure with Moist for everyone who watches because he will appear on this show tomorrow. Literally, we talked about you not telling anybody that and it being a surprise tomorrow. <laughs> Wait, I didn't know that. <laughs> we never talked about that. Well, guess the surprise is out. Moist will be on the show tomorrow. So make sure you tune in because my wife can't keep a secret. Wait, I didn't know we talked about it. You and I talked about it? Yes. I wasn't there. This is a live I was not capture. There. This is a live capture <laughs> right, of whoa. Paulina doesn't listen. All right, it's Ask Lunch Money Time. Hashtag Ask Elm in the comments below. Raymond Han has a comment or a question for me. Paulina, if you weren't with Pomp, what percentage of what percentage of your wealth would be in BTC? Probably more than if I was with him. No, no, you're wrong because right now my my thing is zero. But if I didn't know you, I would be like, what is this? What is this? And I'd put maybe, you know, $500, $1,000 just so I'm exposed. I'm diversified. Yeah, who am I kidding? I'd go buy stuff with that money. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I would, I would do it. Why do you think I wouldn't do it? I didn't say a single word. Exactly. I, no, I was trying to zoom in, that's all. Yeah, I was yeah. just trying to zoom in. All right. Zoom beep, in. beep, I'm a Jeep is back. He has a question. He said, I have been watching the show for a couple of weeks. Love it so far. I have a question for Anthony. How would someone that has no background in finance or programming get into the crypto career field? My background is a mechanical engineer and I currently work as a CAE engineer. How would I even start trying to transfer to crypto and find a job? What skills are the employees look the employers looking for? If possible, please give some specific tips and not vague answers like learn about bl blockchain. Sorry if that was blunt. Beep, beep. That wasn't even that blunt. That was like a whole paragraph. Beep, beep, I'm a Jeep. You said uh, paragraph. <laughs> There's an R in there. Not, <laughs> not in English. Uh, <laughs> yes, in English. Uh, yeah, actually, just kidding. Um, so here's what I think that you should do. It's just like transferring to any new industry, right? There's three things that you need to be able to do. One, you need to be able to understand the industry specific terminology, concepts, uh, definitions, all that stuff. The second thing is that you need to have a skill set that directly fits the job that they want. So do you wanna go into customer service? Make sure you got customer service skills. If you wanna go into accounting, make sure you got accounting skills. If you wanna go into marketing, make sure you got marketing skills, right? You have mechanical engineering skills, great. If there are mechanical engineers, there are some companies in crypto that are hiring for mechanical engineers. They're usually doing some sort of hardware uh, type um, you know, product. So there's something like a Start9 Labs or a potentially Foundation, which does hardware wallets. Like there, there's all kinds of stuff that you could go and you can look at with mechanical engineering. But if you say, hey, I actually don't wanna do that or I don't wanna work with those types of companies, then you may have to reskill yourself in a new type of skill. The third thing that you have to be able to do is you have to be able to articulate both the industry knowledge and also the skills that you have in order to position yourself to the employer to help the employer understand that if they hire you, why you will be able to move the company forward. Too many times people go into job interviews and what they try to explain is, listen, you should hire me because I can do this specific job. But what most employers want to hear is, I'm going to hire you to do this job, but when I hire you for this job, you're also going to be able to help my entire company move forward. You're going to be forward thinking, you're going to be creative, you're going to be a self-starter, you're going to go into work every day and you're going to say, you know what, I've already done my job. My job today took me four hours, but you know what I thought? Here's a great idea that could help our business. We should do A, B, and C. And also I found the two people inside the company that could potentially help accomplish this. We've put together a proposal and we'd like to propose that along with our regular jobs, we also have this new initiative that we're going to attack and that will move the company forward it will make more money for everyone who is a shareholder and therefore i am doing a great job as it is employee. one really run on long run on sentence please don't put it that way but the sentiment is right so the whole point is make sure you got the industry knowledge make sure you got the skill set that specifically fits the job and then be able to articulate to the employer or to the hiring manager not only why you can accomplish the job at which they are presenting as an opportunity but also how you specifically 
if you are hired by that company can help them move forward. Because if you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards. If you're not adapting, you're dying. And nobody is around here to die. You watch Lunch Money, you're trying to adapt, you're trying to grow, you're trying to win, you're trying to be the king of whatever you do. That was interesting. But I hope that answered your question, beep beep, I'm a Jeep. That's all for today, guys. Later. Miami's better than New York. Bang, bang. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Lunch Money as much as we did. And don't forget, Lunch Money is now sponsored by BlockFi, so go check them out. There's a link in the description that you can click on. I'm an investor, a user, and a huge fan. What? You're a bigger fan of BlockFi than you are of me? BlockFi is my second favorite thing in the world behind (laughs) Polina. They've got three products. (laughs) They can give you a U.S. dollar loan. You can earn up to 8.6% interest on an interest-bearing account, or you can buy and sell cryptocurrencies on their crypto exchange. I personally use the interest-bearing account. There's not very many places where you'll find up to 8.6% interest on a deposit in an interest-bearing account. Go do your own research. There's risk associated, but 8.6% is pretty compelling. So click on the link in the description. Say thanks to the folks at BlockFi. Subscribe to our channel. Like the video. Annoy Polina in the comments. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. And be kind to your friends.